The Florida Gators have added to their 2025 recruiting class with Tayshawn Gelsey at tight end, and I am pumped for what he can become. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free by listening to podcasts and on YouTube. Happy Monday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants Country and NFL 33. Today's episode of Locked On Gators brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down and are donezo, donezo, I hate it, I hate it. No longer sports all day, all night, it's not the same, but this summer FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, there's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And I, I will say this before we, we talk about Tayshawn Gelsey specifically, uh, I know it's holiday weekend. Hope you have a great weekend. Safe travels if you're traveling anywhere. We will still have shows come out all five days. Just want to make that clear. Monday through Friday, we will still have shows come out. We're doing that. Uh, Tayshawn Gelsey at tight end, committed to the Florida Gators. Three-star tight end out of Jacksonville. He's a receiver in high school. He's going to be playing tight end for the Florida Gators and wherever he would have gone to college. Um, and I said this before he committed, which also pat on the back there uh gators insider program just saying links in the description below but may 28th i sent out the tweet that tayshawn gelsey my prediction florida gator i'm just saying we're one for one right now we got three total out there but tayshawn gelsey is one so two still up in the air but i said it before he committed i said it when he committed and i will say it again i like the addition of tayshawn gelsey i know that there's a lot of florida gators fans out there rightfully so I, I want to put that out there, rightfully so, that go, I, I don't get jazz for a three-star. I don't get jazz for this. Like, I need blue-chip players only. This is the SEC. I, I understand, okay? I'm not saying you're wrong. What I am saying is that right now he's a three-star. Sure. Maybe he'll climb to a four-star. I don't know. Frankly, I don't care that much. I've said this before. Like I don't get to too caught up in in what the rankings say just because one they're wrong a lot and two i'll take the opinions of people who get paid millions tayshawn gelsey had legitimate offers with kentucky auburn georgia he had offers with a ton of sec programs a ton of power four programs i uh yeah i don't care too much about what people who don't make that kind of money get. just saying uh, like, there's a reason that you get paid as much as you do to do what you do. That's fine. I don't know how much they get paid. I know they're not going to be paid millions like the people who their co- their coaching careers depend on, hey, we need to bring in players that help us win games. So I will take their word over that. I will also say that with Tayshawn Gelsey specifically, I'm not saying with every player, but Tayshawn Gelsey specifically, I look at him as a player where I go, yeah, I see why you're a three-star, especially if we're talking about moving the tight end. I get it. However, what you can be is pretty damn exciting. This is like 6'4", 215 pounds right now. You're going to need the bulk up, right? However, when we talk about the these project tight ends, because don't forget, Florida right now, we talked about this on the Saturday show when Tayshawn Gelsey committed. Florida's tight ends for years have been converted position players. Hayden Hansen was a quarterback to tight end. Arliss Boardingham, receiver to tight end. Amir Jackson, receiver to tight end. Kyle Pitts, QB to tight end. Jordan Reed, QB to tight end. Like, like so many of these guys change positions to go to tight end, right? And that's fine. Tony Livingston went from guard to tight end, right? It's not that. My thing that I'm saying about Tayshaun Gelsey, I need to be very clear about what I am saying here. And I want to make it clear that I'm saying this. I don't think Tayshaun Gelsey will become this player. I don't even know if Tayshawn Gelsey can become this player. Okay. What I am saying is that I think a lot of Florida Gators fans see a wide receiver going to tight end 
and they look at him and they say, Kyle Pitts. I think that Tayshawn Gelsey is the kind of player that stylistically you can say is similar to Kyle Pitts. Like with, with Arliss Boardingham, everybody wants to go, oh, pass catching tight end, Kyle Pitts for like pass catching tight end for Florida, Kyle Pitts. Arliss Boardingham is nothing like Kyle Pitts stylistically. He's more like a Travis Kelsey type stylistically, right? Josh Oliver type stylistically. Like, like he's not Kyle Pitts stylistically. Amir Jackson, more of a receiver style, still not, still not Kyle Pitts stylistically. Okay. I think when you cut on Tayshawn Gelsey's film and you see the way he's used, you go, okay, that is more similar to how Kyle Pitts was used. And Amir Jackson was used too much like a receiver to be compared to Kyle Pitts. And around bubble screens, perimeter screens, all that kind of stuff. Kyle Pitts wasn't really used on those, right? Like maybe rarely, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't, I don't even think I ever saw him run a, run a reverse like that. Um, so I'm not saying, and I'm not saying Tayshawn Gelsey is going to be anywhere good as close as Kyle Pitts was. No one should make that. Kyle Pitts is arguably the most dynamic tight end to ever touch a football field in college, right? I think most people can agree with that. He's arguably the most dynamic pass catching tight end we've ever seen. I'm not going to say a player can be him. I am saying stylistically, he can do that. He can be used like that. Similar frame. And in high school, his film was used very similar to how Kyle Pitts was used at Florida. Like Kyle Pitts, what he did at Florida was even when he wasn't open, they were just throwing it to him. And it's like, hey. He's going to win. He's 6'4". He's got really long arms. And Tayshawn Gelsey, kid could probably tie his shoes without bending over. Like, like he's that long when you look at his arms. Wild catch radius. And he knows it, too. Like, you look at the high school film, and he's like, up, up. Like he's, he's like, throw it up. And he just knows. Like, I, this past weekend, I was, I was at a pool party, and it's like, I was one of the tallest people there. I was probably the tallest person in the pool. And when we were playing pool football, I was like, throw it up. Just, just throw it up. Tayshawn Gelsey does that to other high school football. I'm doing it to guys in their 30s. Tayshawn Gelsey is doing it to other football players that are going to play college football at, at the high level, the, the power four level, right? So yeah, he's contested. No, we don't care. And again, I'm not saying that Tayshawn Gelsey will be Kyle Pitts. I would never say that. There is, I can promise you now, there's not a single player that I will ever say he can be Kyle Pitts. Because that's an unrealistic expectation to put on him, right? But I do think when you talk about stylistically, who can do that? Again, stylistically is like the word I'm going to keep saying because I don't mean you're as good as someone there. I mean that that's your play style. You're you're that, but worse. And that's fine. Like you're used that way, but you're worse. And that's that's totally fine. Nobody's, again, nobody on this show is going to say, he's Kyle Pitts. Nah, that's not. That's not how we rock on Lockdown Gators. We don't say absurd things with intention. Like, like if we say an absurd thing, it's as a joke. This is not. Uh, I do think that stylistically, Tayshawn Gelsey can be used similar to Kyle Pitts. It's also important to acknowledge, will Billy Napier use him like that? I don't know. He hasn't had a player who stylistically is similar to Kyle Pitts. We don't know if he's going to use him like that. But I, I know that since Kyle Pitts has left, Florida Gators fans have gone, He's Kyle Pitts with every pass catching tight end. He's, he's, he can be Kyle Pitts. He can be Kyle Pitts. He can be Kyle Pitts. And then we can't. Okay. That's not how it works. Okay. Um, but if you're looking for a stylistic comp, I think you have it. Again, stylistically, not as good, but similar play styles. I think that's where Tayshawn Gelsey is. And like that, that's why I'm like, I don't care if it's three star, four star, five star, two star, one star, zero star, blue star, red star. I don't care. He's a player that can be pretty good. And like, let, let's call it spade a spade. If he does finish as a three star, if he contributes at all, you're getting significant value for him. Because at the SEC level, you don't typically expect three stars to contribute. So when you get three star contribution, you go, okay, we nailed the eval. If he does that, he does that. If he doesn't, he's the bottom of your class player. You don't expect those guys to work out. So it's fine. Like, I'm, I'm fine swinging on a player like that. No problem with it. 
I've said before, like I prefer you did it at a more premium position, but hey, man, if you get the production, you get the production. I don't care. You get paid a hell of a lot more money than I do to do it. And, and I mean, hey, recruiting, wild beasts, right? Rankings are wrong. Kids flip. It's going to get even crazier probably this week. I love sports. I love them so much, and I, I never want them to stop, and I hope they never do. But playoffs wound up, and they're done. NBA Finals done. NHL Stanley Cup playoffs done. Copa America, we're in the quarterfinals, or, or Euros are in the quarterfinals. Copa, we're you know still in the group stages here, so so at least we have that. But the sports just aren't sporting like they like I want them to year round, right? FanDuel though lets me keep sports betting going whenever I want. I bet on Copa. I bet on Euros. I don't care. Avoid and well. Yeah, avoid boredom, I guess. This summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. So there's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. Remember that FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day, we are available daily and free. Wherever you listen to the podcast and on YouTube. And for the longest time, the Florida Gators have been involved in the recruitment of one Hilton Drake Stubbs. And Hilton Drake Stubbs, of course, safety uh, over from Mandarin and Jacksonville, and which not the same school as Tayshawn Gelsey. Tayshawn Gelsey is from Riverside, Hilton Stubbs from Mandarin. Um, Mandarin's the same school as Tramel Jones, who reportedly shut down his recruitment. I, I don't trust kids. That's my point of saying that. Uh, but it appears that Florida has once again found themselves in the middle of what we can tell is going to be a wild recruitment, right? And here's the thing. I feel like for a long time we've known it was going to be a wild recruitment. And I think that if you're just now figuring out this is going to be a wild recruitment, welcome to the party. We've been here for hours, weeks, months. We've known. Okay, Hilton Subs committed to USC early in the year. I think it was February, maybe March, uh, but committed to USC early in the year. He decommitted from USC last, uh, I believe it was Wednesday or Thursday, th Thursday, Thursday evening, decommitted from USC. Cool. The immediate smoke, even before the decommitment, was Florida. That was the immediate smoke. It was Florida. Uh, when he, before he even decommitted, 24-7, had their national and Miami reporters go, Miami's trending! And then they kind of did like a little Steve Harvey, like, oh, wait, nope, I misread that. It's Florida. And then now it's Miami again is trending? Wild recruitment, like I said. The expectation is that Hilton Stubbs is going to commit this Thursday, the 4th of July. A lot of kids will be committing 4th of July, at least 4th of July weekend. That's what they like to do. That's a big weekend for recruits committing. Florida doesn't really have a lot of kids scheduled that they're targeting. Uh, but, you know, kids kids could pop off at any time. There's, kid, there's a lot of kids without set recruitment dates or set commitment dates. A lot of those tend to happen there. I'm not saying it will for Florida, but the, a lot of kids tend to commit then and tend to pop then, as, as, uh, as the folks like to say. But again, the expectation is that he'll come in on Thursday. The rumor is that it's going to be to Miami. Now, I've seen a lot of people go, oh, he's committing on the 4th of July. He's going to go to Miami. Miami's trending. He's chasing a bag. He's doing this. He's doing that. Here's the thing. I don't care. Like I, I I don't I don't like that people go, he's chasing a bag. He's he just wants money. Blah. Like I don't care about those complaints. I don't, because you know what? Wild uh wild, wild thing that I'm about to say here. And hear me out. Don't don't get mad at me when I say this. And and if your jaw hits the floor, I apologize. I'll help you pick it up. Florida can pay kids too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Florida can pay kids too. I don't care if you go, oh, he's chasing a bag, he's chasing this, he's chasing that. I've said before, I don't think there's any kids that truly just go, or any good football players that truly just go, I'm going to the place that pays me the most. 
I think what a lot of the good football players do is that they kind of narrow down their list of schools and they go, of these schools, I'm going to the school that pays me the most. I got no hate for that. Because if I'm looking at four jobs and I go, hey, I think I'd be cool with either of these, but I'm going to go to the one that pays me the most. If I did that, you'd be like, yeah, bro, go get your money, right? Like, like that would be your thought process. But a lot of kids, with then they, you know, they, when they don't pick Florida, we go right to, they're chasing a bag. I don't give a damn if they're chasing a bag. You're the University of Florida. I'm not saying go band for band with every kid, but I'm saying there's some kids where if you value them, go go get them. And so Florida not matching the bag either means that you're not aggressive enough or you don't value them that much to be like, yeah, I don't feel like dropping. I don't know what the number is, but I don't feel like dropping 500,000 for a kid right now or for safety right now or for this safety right now or for this quarterback right now, whatever it is. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But what I am saying is that I am so sick and tired of hearing he doesn't want to come to Florida. He's chasing a bag. So what? If he's a good football player, match it. Simple as that. You think he'll help you win? Match it. Okay? And I will say two things. I don't know if it's money, playing time promises, endorsement promises. I don't know. First off, with Miami, we're still waiting for Samson Oak and Lola to get his pancake truck from John Ruiz that he promised him. But also, I will say one. Like I said, I know two things here. One, this has been, was, and will continue to be clearly a roller coaster recruitment until signing day. And we called that the day he committed to USC. We did a show either the next day or a couple days later talking about it. We knew this was going to be a roller coaster. We knew this was not going to end. We knew this was going to be a commitment that goes down to signing day. He could commit to Florida on Thursday. He could commit to Miami on Thursday. He could commit to South Harmon Institute of Technology on Thursday. I don't care where he commits. This is a recruitment that's going down to signing day. There's no, I'm shutting it down. There's none of that. And for Florida's side of things, I don't care if it's bag chasing. I don't care what it is. For Florida, I've said this since he committed to USC. I will continue to say this until signing day. This is one of those kids where I think if you win some football games early on, you can land the commitment. I don't care about a bag. I don't. It's irrelevant to me. We've known this was going to be a thing. Another thing, like, like I don't care if it's money. Florida, you got to get more aggressive with this. I don't care if it's being aggressive with telling kids, hey, like you want to commit to us, but you want to wait to this specific time. That doesn't work with us. We want you to commit. Shut it down. Got to get more aggressive with that, telling kids shut it down. Also, buying players, I don't give a damn. I, I know that there's so many Florida Gators fans that want to go, oh, and, and every, every college thinks of this. Like all college fan bases go, I don't want to be buying players. I want you to come here. I want to win football games. That's what I want. You can fill out a lot of your class with kids who are, are culture builders, kids who are going to set the tone culturally. You can do that. There's some players, though, where you go, yeah, like we'll buy the player. Or you're going to be left by the wayside. Simple as that. And that's not a Hilton Stubb specific comment. Okay? That is not a Hilton Stubb specific comment. That is a recruiting one in general. We've seen it happen kind of every year. We go, we, we hear a kid, he's going to Miami because because they're going to pay him more. I don't care. If you're going to Miami because they're going to pay you more, that's fine. If Florida doesn't value enough to pay you, that's fine. And that's my thing too. If it's, hey, we don't want to pay, again, let, let's say hypothetically Hilton Stubbs getting 500000 from Miami. I don't know the number at all. Let's say it's 500000 Let's say any player is getting 500000 If Florida goes, hey, we just don't value that player to be $500,000, that's fine. I have no qualms with going, hey, we're not going to overpay. No problem with that. I don't, truly. But I do think that there's some kids where you got to go, yeah, like we're going to pay this. Premium position, five-star player that we know is going to be good, we'll pay it. Set it. But Florida, you got to get more aggressive with that. You do, really. And again, I'm not even talking Hilton Stubbs specifically. 
I'm just saying there are good football players that you let walk away because you don't want to go band for band, bag for bag, whatever it is. And I I understand there's some players where you're not going to be able to do that. That's fine. Some point, Florida, you got to get more aggressive with this stuff. A little bit. A li- I'm not saying go willy nilly, pay everybody every amount of money they want. I'm saying you got to get a little more aggressive with stuff. That's all I'm saying about it. Okay. As for Hill and Stubbs, we knew this was going to be a roller coaster. When he committed the USA, I said he's not staying. You, you can go back and check the tape. When he committed the USA, I said he's not staying, committed the USA. I'll be floored. A kid committing across the country. And also, like, I feel like a lot of people are going, oh, Hilton Stubbs is going for money? Do you think he committed to USC for any other reason? Do you think any of those kids commit- committed to USC for any other reason? In fact, based on the timeline of when they committed, it wouldn't shock me if, again, my, again, this is pure speculation. It wouldn't shock me if part of the contract they signed when they committed was you got to be committed for at least three months or something like that, because it seems like three months after all the five stars committed, they decommitted and Lincoln can throw up his little deuces all he wants. Brother, they might be throwing up the deuces to you if you don't have a good season or two. Big Ten's different from just a little bit different from what you're used to. But still, I stand on the point, Florida, you got to get more aggressive with things. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free breakfast in the podcast and on YouTube. To wrap up today's show, like I said, Florida, I need you to be more aggressive. And I'm going to spend the next however long this show is going to be to say I need you to be more aggressive at one specific position. Get me some damn offensive linemen. Okay. I understand there's not a ton of blue chip talent in the offensive line in state this year. I get that. Go find the kids with the measurables that you want and add them to the class. You look at recent years, Florida's lost quite a few battles for offensive line. Samson Oakland Lola and Francis Maui Goa come to mind. And again, I'll I'll say this. I wasn't as sold on Samson, was sold on Francis. And, and, you know, the, there's the, the rumors of like, hey, maybe Samson will flip the D-line. He's not, he's not doing too great. He's always going to be a project player, right? And here's the thing with, with offensive line specifically, okay? I do think that it's hard to find kids who will become quality SEC offensive linemen. I think it's way harder than a lot of people acknowledge. However, when you find those kids, go get them. Because like, I also understand when you're looking at high school football, if you played high school football, you probably know this. If you didn't play high school football, you probably know this. Like when you look at a lot of high school teams, they, th- they, they run the ball a lot. Like across the country, I know there's some teams that can air it out. and do. But when you look at a lot of high school teams, they run the football a lot. Because offensive line play, it's easier to run block than it is to pass block. Because it's easier to just go, hey, we're going to take our biggest kids and send them downhill. It makes sense, right? When you look at a lot of teams that are good or a lot of high-ranking teams and a lot of high-ranking offensive linemen in high school, a lot of them are just straight up overpowering other high school kids. They're playing like men among boys. And that leads people to go, well, is he really that good or is he just really strong? Okay. Okay. Here's my point to that, my counterpoint. Like I said, it's hard to find guys that you can watch in high school and say, hey, they're going to become quality SEC offensive linemen. Just because so much of high school offensive line play is just being stronger, right? I don't care if that's what it is. If you're just overpowering other high school kids, if you've got strength and length and height, get them. We talk about with receivers and tight ends and and DBs. We go, oh, yeah, height, weight, speed freak. That's the the HWS, height, weight, speed freak. DK Metcalf, height, weight, speed freak. Those kinds of guys, right? I don't care if that's like, get me a height, weight, size freak. (laughs) Like, that's it. Height, weight, strength freak on the offensive line. Go get the kids that have unreal power that are just bullying other defensive linemen at the high school level and call me crazy florida you have two offensive line coaches you know what you can do then 
bring in the project players. That's fine. Bring in the big athletes. That's fine. Not all the project players are three stars. There's plenty of four and five star offensive linemen that have the height, weight, strength, agility, whatever it is that you need, and just are are so raw. They are. There are a lot. Samson Okanola is a good example of that. I don't mean to bully the kid. I'm not trying to do that at all. But he's someone who you watched and you went, okay, his technique is a mess, but he's just nasty. Fletcher Westfall, with he's committed to Florida last year for the 2024 class. His technique's not great, but he's nasty. And that's what I'm looking for. I need offensive linemen that are going to punch you in the mouth. And then when you go, oh my God, why'd you do that? They punch you in the mouth again. That's what I want. Go get those kids with unreal power. Teach them how to play the damn position. We always say, oh, I don't want offensive linemen contributing for a year or two at least. Good. Take the kids that are freak athletes. Mean, nasty. That's how I'm going to get nasty. Mean kids. Teach them how to play offensive linemen. But Florida, like I, I feel like there's far too often where you hear, oh, yeah, they didn't invest in this five-star kid. Like, they, like they're not willing to buy players in the offensive line. They're not willing to, to get into bidding wars for the offensive line. Did you watch the team in 2023? I watched the team in 2023. Overpay for an offensive lineman. Because, like, long-term, you need it. And I have no problem. Honestly, I, I respect the confidence to stick with Rob Sale and 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 – bring in Jonathan DeCoster and stick with your offensive line staff and go, we think we can develop them. That's fine. I just hate that you keep going for the kids that, that are, are long-term projects. Go ahead, get the five stars that need work. Get the four stars that need work. I don't care if they need work. I don't want them playing early. Get the kids that have the physical tools that you can't teach and teach them the physical skills you can. And watch how much better your offensive line is going to get as a unit. Like I, I'm just saying, I know that that I'm they get paid a hell of a lot more money than I do. I'm not saying to to trust my evaluation of kids. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying is that Florida needs offensive line help long term. And you've let quite a few good football players go. And we hear it's because of money, because of this, because of that. At a certain point, go get the kids that you that like. And we've also heard that there's plenty of kids that Florida's watched them and mm, not sold on them. Why? He's 6'4, 330, and can move. Go get him. Put him in your weight program. Develop him. Make him better. He doesn't have long enough arms. Move him to guard. I don't care what it is. There's plenty of players that Florida has not taken for nitpicky reasons or have not prioritized for nitpicky reasons. Go prioritize them. Build your offensive line and pummel people. If you're confident in this coaching staff, in your offensive line staff, allow them to develop the play. Put their money where their mouths are. Make them develop the kids. Go, yeah, he's raw. That's fine. We don't want him playing for a while but you need them long-term. Like, that's why when, when you talk about the kids like Enoch Wangoy, 2025 kid that reclassified the 2024, really needs to add a ton of weight, but he's got height, he's got length, he's got arm length. Length, I think I said. He's got heart. He's got height. He's got weight. He's got arm length. He's got agility. He's got mobility. I don't care if he's a three-star. I don't care what it is. That's a kid that I'm fine with taking. But I also need the five stars. I, I need the high-ranking kids. Enoch Wango played one year of high school football. If you can get him to hit, you're going to look like a genius. But I need you to take in the kids that are already higher-ranking and develop them and make them better as well. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk more Florida Gators football for Lockdown Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants Country 9533, and I'll see you all next time.